Alright, hello guys. In this video, we're going to be talking about a fall light cooldown that's going to be starting off our September. Now, we did have a cooldown that is kind of taking place right now, and it's it's moderate. We are going to look at the temperature anomalies. You, you can take a look at that. I was calling for this about a week ago, so it is happening. But uh, we are looking for an even bigger cooldown to start on the 3rd and last till about the 10th. And this will lead to a lot of fall-like temperatures for the North Central, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeastern United States. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask you to subscribe if you do like weather-related content. And also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now, first things first, we're going to look at an oscillation called the PNA, which is the Pacific North American Oscillation. And this is the oscillation that I think is going to be driving this pattern that's going to lead to this cooldown. At least for the next 10 days, this is going to be kind of the really the oscillation that is leading to all the temperature anomalies we are going to be having over this first little period of the month. Now, this is because actually our NAO and AO, which are usually the driving factors for the the eastern United States at least, they're in a positive phase, which means usually you would see warmer than average conditions. But the PNA is in a very favorable position for cold temperatures in the eastern United States over these first 10 days. As you can see, we want this oscillation to be positive and it is going to be in the positive for at least the first 15 days of the month. So this is the leading factor into the cooldown we are going to be having in the north central and eastern United States. Now I'm not going to get too much into the logistics of like what it is and all that because it usually just confuses people. But what you need to know is that in the positive phase it usually leads to a cooldown in the eastern United States and a warm up in the western United States. So we're going to be looking at our GEFS, which is the GFS Ensemble model. We're going to be looking at the surface temperature anomalies here uh, over the course of through the 1st through the 10th of September. Now, I'm using this model because I think it does have an accurate representation of what is going to happen. And also the European Ensemble model does agree pretty tightly with this one as well. So I think they're both on the same page. So I'm going to go ahead and show the GEFS model here as we go along. Now, you can see... This is for today, actually, and you can see that we do have some cooler than normal conditions there for Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, a lot of those central regions, and then New England and the northeastern United States are actually dealing with quite cold conditions with some of those 8 to 12 degrees below average Celsius through some of those mountainous regions in Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, areas like that. We are seeing those far below average conditions. Now, we're going to move on one frame, and you can see by tomorrow, actually, we do see a little bit of a warm up here. So we're seeing a lot of those yellows and oranges show back up for the Eastern United States, a little bit of blue there, but it's more average to slightly above average than normal throughout the Eastern United States than, every, than anything. So, but we do see this cool temperatures there in central Canada there. And you can see how that's starting to intrude into Northern or to, into North Dakota and Northern Minnesota. And as we head on one more frame to the third, you can see this cooldown starts to really build eastward. And we see a little bit of a warm up there briefly for Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas. It's going to be very brief as well as the southeastern United States. But we do see this cooldown start to re enter the New England states by the third. And by the fourth, you can see this cooldown really digs into Minnesota the Dakotas, Iowa, Nebraska, and some of these Great Lakes states, we see a lot of that purple, which means far below average temperatures, 8 to 12 degrees below average Celsius. This could be one of our biggest cool downs so far in this, like, you know, heading into this cool, cool season. So throughout all of August and now into September, this is our biggest cool down so far, I would say, as Minnesota, South Dakota, we're already experiencing far below average temperatures. It starts to warm up briefly again for New England. By the 5th, though, we see this move far east, and you can see the Great Lakes, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, all of these regions are far below average. You can see some of those purples showing up again for Pennsylvania, upstate New York. So this is far below average conditions for interior northeast, New England, and through Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. But all of the blue areas are below average by this point. Now... You can see by Friday, the 6th, we do have these below average conditions starting to move out of the north central United States and more towards the east coast of the United States and eastern United States as well as some of those Gulf states really experiencing this cool down. So areas like Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, I know you guys have been dealing with far above average conditions a lot of the time during August and not really getting in on those cool downs. It's been really above average for the most part 
the entire time. Uh, even when the a lot of the northern regions do see a cooldown, you're still above average. So this is really good news for you guys, probably. Uh, as well as the mid-Atlantic, we're seeing a cooldown for Virginia, North Carolina, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. All of these regions are far below average, as well as South Carolina and Georgia. Florida being the only exception here. Uh, but basically, from the Gulf states all the way up to New England, we have this really far below average air air area here over the eastern United States. Now, you can see that one starts to taper off a little bit, and we do get a second cooldown here by the 7th. So, actually, it would normally end here, but we do have a second trough coming into the eastern United States. And again, with the PNA, like I said, the western United States can expect a warm-up here for the most part during a positive PNA phase, and that is what we're seeing if you do look out west. I just wanted to mention that because a lot of people in the west get upset when I don't talk about them, even in, you know, air, in videos that are for the eastern United States technically, I do like to mention them a little bit. So we do still see slightly cooler than normal conditions from Louisiana eastward into Georgia and then all the way up the east coast, but we it is significantly warmer than it was in prior days to that one during the 5th and the 6th of September. So this is Saturday the 7th, but Minnesota, Wisconsin, you're cooling down again significantly, like I said, as that, that second trough starts to come in. And by the 8th, you can see we kind of see the same story again. It starts to move east, and a lot of those Great Lakes regions are far below average by this point. From Minnesota into Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, and then interior New England as well. We're in those darker blues, which is 6 to 8 degrees below average. And then some of those purples, again, is 8 to 12 degrees below average Celsius. So it's, it's very cold comparatively to normal. But in general, the Dakotas downward through Nebraska and then out eastward into the mid-Atlantic states were pretty far below average in those darker blues. And then south of you in the Gulf states were still slightly below average with uh, anywhere from 0.5 to about 3 degrees below average Celsius, which is still a little bit noticeable, actually, believe it or not. We are going to move on one more frame to the ninth, and you can see this one is still lingering there for the Gulf states and the interior northeast, and actually the coastal northeast as well, uh, as well as the mid-Atlantic states still holding on to some of that cold and some of those uh, Indiana, uh, Illinois, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, those states. And then the Gulf, again, still slightly below average. The west, you can see that warm-up is starting to move eastward, actually, as the Dakotas, Nebraska, Kansas are starting to warm up. Uh, and by the 10th here, as we move on, you can see it, it's moving further eastward into Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa. And this is actually the last frame I have to show you guys as that warm up actually moves further east into the eastern United States. And this is getting a little bit further out. So there isn't really a guarantee that this warm up will happen. But as of right now, the teleconnections look to change. The PNA looks to go a little bit negative, which would lead to warmer than average temperatures being able to enter into the eastern United States and those NAO and uh, AO oscillations are still in, you know, unfavorable phases for below average temperatures. So we will likely see a little bit of a warm up here towards the middle portion of the month of September, you know, 10th through 15th. It looks like we'll have a bit of a warm up. The cold is still hanging on there along the East Coast slightly, but that tapers off after this frame. Now for... The five-day averages on the GEFS, and this is cool to look at, but from the 4th through the 9th, this is the temperature anomalies we will be seeing. Again, warm there for the for the western United States, California into those Rockies, the Pacific Northwest, and then down into the four corner states as well as Texas and Oklahoma. We'll be dealing with above average temperatures during this five-day period. But from the Dakotas down through Nebraska and then out eastward into the mid-Atlantic, we will be dealing with a pretty big cooldown here as we see, you know, areas for a five day period. It's it's really significant to see those blues, to see those four to eight degrees below average Celsius. It's going to be significantly cooler than normal from Minnesota through Indiana, you know, Wisconsin, Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York. And then some of those New England regions, it's going to be significantly cooler than normal for a five-day period. So you, this will be pretty significant. And just in case you don't believe me, because that does happen sometimes where people don't believe me, here's NOAA's 6 to 10-day outlook, which is the 6th through the 10th. And you can see they're calling for some of those same regions to be in the dark blue, which means there's a high probability of below-average temperatures, according to them, 
for Illinois. You, all of these blue areas, areas, they're expecting cooler than normal temperatures, but especially in those darker blue regions. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be coming out with another Dorian video later today. There's big updates, big changes. And just like I said, I just want to let you guys know now, just in case you're watching from Florida, there is still that chance that it is going to hit Florida, and that's actually becoming more favorable once again. And I did say that in my live stream yesterday, that it wouldn't surprise me if these models come back west again, and sure enough, they're doing it. Everybody seemed so sure that this one was going to go out to sea, and now they're starting to trend west once again. So everything is still on the table. Florida can still get hit. It can still hit the east coast, and it can still go out to sea. Everything is still possible at this point. So stay tuned for that update later today. We will know more by that point. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.